the second aspect of uh, intraoral examination is uh, heart tissue examination uh, this involves uh, uh, the primary examination uh, for the evaluation of the teeth uh, which <coughs> includes the visual inspection the probing percussion trans illumination and the basic tools uh, which are required are a good light source a mirror a sharp explorer and an air syringe uh, which are as basic uh, as in any dental practice uh, the signs of uh, caries has to be noted down uh, the uh, presence of any faulty restorations have to be noted down noted down uh, the presence of spacing in between the teeth have to be noted down the occlusion has to be noted down in case there is any malocclusion or in case there any difference in the molar relationship or the canine relationship in case there is a excessive deep bite excessive overbite open bite scissor bite cross bite or edge to edge bite uh, which makes a lot of difference uh, in the, the occlusion aspect uh, basically because any changes in the occlusion has uh, deleterious effects on the uh, surrounding uh, musculature. Uh, the mobility of the teeth also has to be evaluated uh, for uh, the need being uh, to evaluate the integrity of the attachment apparatus uh, surrounding the teeth. and. Uh, uh, this is carried out by moving the teeth uh, laterally in the socket or uh, preferably in the handles between two instruments and uh, the mobility can be either pathologic or uh, it can be the uh, adaptive mobility and uh, the pathologic mobility of the teeth uh, basically results uh, from uh, inflammatory process uh, the parafunctional habits and uh, the adaptive mobility uh, this occurs uh, due to the anatomic factors uh, such as uh, uh, short roots or uh, poor crown root uh, ratio. Uh, coming to the diagnosis slide, uh, uh, it involves a, a provisional uh, diagnosis, uh, a differential diagnosis and uh, a final diagnosis. And then uh, the provisional diagnosis is also called as a tentative diagnosis or a working diagnosis and uh, it is uh, formed after evaluating uh, the case history and performing uh, the physical examination of the patient. Uh, the differential diagnosis is a process of listing out of uh, two or more diseases uh, having similar signs and symptoms of which uh, only one uh, can be or could be attributed uh, to the patient's uh, uh, physical presentation. Finally, the final diagnosis is only possible after uh, carrying out uh, further investigations. Uh, when we talk about the investigations, uh, the investigations can be categorized uh, into uh, different types such as uh, chair side investigations uh, which uh, is uh, pulp vitality testing, uh, the percussion test, the cytologies and also the aspiration uh, of uh, certain swellings or cysts or abscesses. And uh, the laboratory uh, investigations uh, involved uh, the routine uh, complete hemogram. Uh, the urine analysis, the liver function test and uh, the radiological investigations uh, are again uh, subcategorized uh, into two groups which is namely intraoral projections and extraoral projections. The intraoral projections uh, constitute the intraoral periapical x-rays, the occlusal x-rays, uh, the bite wing x-rays uh, and uh, the extraoral projections include the OPT, the PA view of the skull and jaws, the AP view. Uh, the PNS view or the submental vertex view and also uh, the temporomandibular joint views. Uh, the other investigations or the, uh, are the special investigations uh, like uh, silography, the MRI, uh, the CT scans or even the PET scans. Uh, moving ahead with the final diagnosis, uh, the final diagnosis uh, can usually be uh, reached uh, following chronological organization and uh, critical evaluation of the information obtained uh, from the following, uh, primarily the patient history, uh, the physical examination of the patient and uh, as a result of uh, radiological and uh, laboratory investigations. Uh, the diagnosis usually identifies the inference uh, for the patient's primary complaint first uh, with uh, subsidiary inference of uh, the concurrent problems. 
uh, moving ahead uh, with the treatment planning, uh, the formulation of the treatment plan uh, will depend on both the knowledge and the experience of a competent clinician and uh, the nature and extent of uh, treatment facilities available. It also uh, requires the evaluation of any special risks uh, which are posed uh, by the compromised medical status in the circumstance of uh, plant anesthetic diagnostic or uh, surgical procedure and also the medical assessment uh, of a patient is also very important to identify the need of medical consultation and uh, to recognize the significant deviation uh, from normal health status that may affect uh, the dental management. The different treatment uh, phases in the treatment formulation of the treatment plan are uh, primarily the preliminary phase, the non-surgical phase, uh, the surgical phase, the restorative phase and uh, finally the uh, maintenance phase. Uh, the preliminary phase, uh, this involves the treatment of emergencies uh, such as uh, dental abscess uh, or a peripheral abscess, uh, the periodontal conditions, uh, uh, the extraction of hopeless teeth and uh, provisional replacement uh, if uh, needed uh, may be postponed uh, to a more convenient time. Uh, the non-surgical phase involves plaque control and pl uh, patient education, uh, the diet control in patients with uh, rampant caries the removal of uh, calculus and uh, root planing and uh, the correction of uh, restorative and prosthetic irritational factors uh, the excavation of caries and uh, of, uh, and its uh, restoration the surgical phase uh, uh, is basically a, a periodontal phase and a endodontic phase wherein uh, a periodontal therapy including the placement of implants is been carried out and uh, the uh, uh, root canal the treatment of uh, the pulpally involved uh, teeth are also uh, fall under the purview of the surgical phase. Uh, finally, the restorative, uh, sorry, uh, uh, just before the final uh, phase is the restorative phase, uh, which uh, is, uh, involves the final restorations uh, and uh, fixed and removable prosthodontic appliances, the evaluation of uh, the response uh, to the restorative procedures. Uh, in the maintenance phase, which is the final uh, phase of the treatment planning, uh, it uh, basically involves the periodic uh, rechecking for plug and calculus, the gentival conditions uh, for uh, pockets or any signs of inflammation, uh, the occlusion, the tooth mobility and uh, other pathologic changes. Uh, moving ahead to the last of slide, uh, prognosis, uh, it is defined uh, as an act of uh, foretelling the course of disease uh, that is the prospect of survival and recovery from a disease as anticipated from the usual course of that disease or indicated by special features of the case. Uh, this is a bonus slide and also a very important slide uh, about the consent. Uh, written consent is a must uh, to get adequate information about the case and before the start of any non-invasive or invasive procedures uh, just to be away and safe uh, from medical legal travesties which have been rampant uh, these days. Uh, I would like to end uh, this presentation with a small dua. Rabbi Zidni Ilma Allahumma Inni Asaluka Ilman Nafia. Jazakallah Khair for your patient uh, listening uh, and any inputs and criticisms uh, welcome. Uh, thank you so much.